I. Today we will talk about the ECLAT algorithm. It is a very popular algorithm for frequent item set mining, that is for data mining, to analyze the data. This algorithm called ECLAT was proposed in a paper by Zaki in 2000. It is a little bit old, but it is a popular algorithm that has introduced some important idea used in many other algorithms after. Uh, if you want to try the ECLAT algorithm, the source code and the data sets are offered in the SPMF uh, software, which you can find online. Then you can use for your research or to try on your own data. Before I explain ECLAT, let's review briefly what is frequent item set mining. The problem of frequent item set mining is defined as follows. The goal is to analyze some data, like a table of uh, record we call transactions, and we want to find what appears many times in, in this uh, table. We call the frequent item set. So here, let me introduce this with an example about uh, shopping. It could be other types of data, but here I will talk about shopping. So here I have a table with four transactions, we call T1, T2, T3, and T4. And each transaction contains a set of items that were bought by some customers in the store. So in the store here for this example, we have some items like pasta, lemon, bread, orange, and cake. So the first transaction means someone bought pasta, lemon, bread, orange. The second transaction means someone else buy pasta and lemon and so on. So to do frequent item set mining, we need to set the parameter we call min sub, the minimum support. And the goal is to find all the item set, the sets of items or products that appear in the database at least min sub times. Okay. So let me show you this with some example in more details. Let's say I take the same database I showed you before and I set the parameter min sub to 2. That means I want to find all the sets of items, the item sets, that have been bought at least twice together. Okay. So for example, this is the result here you can see. I find that lemon is a frequent item set because it appears at least twice in the database. So we have lemon, lemon, lemon. Uh, orange and cake is another item set because orange and cake, orange and cake, it appears twice, at least twice. Okay, so it is okay. So the goal in frequent item set mining is to find all these frequent item set in a database about shopping or about other things. So generally, how we choose the minimum support will uh, decide how many item set you, frequent item set you will find in the result. And if you set the minimum support to a small value, you will find more item sets. And it will take more time for the algorithm to find the result. So this is just a brief overview about frequent item set mining. So solving this problem is not easy. Here I only have five products in the database, but in the real database, maybe there are thousands of products and there's a lot of combination we need to evaluate to find the result. So we need some efficient algorithm. So today I will explain one algorithm called ECLAT. Okay, because it is a popular algorithm and also it has some interesting idea. As I said before, ECLAT was introduced in 2000. ECLAT means equivalence class uh, transformation. This is the name. And it is an algorithm that is generally faster than a priori. Okay, another famous algorithm. We say that ECLAT utilizes a depth first search to, to find the frequent item set. Okay, I will explain to you later. And also we say that it uses a vertical database. Okay, and a special concept called equivalence class. 
of item sets that have the same prefix. I will explain to you after. Okay. So first, let me show you some definition. First, we have a definition. We need to have a set of items in our database. We call I. I is the set of items in our database, all the different items, like the products. So in our example, it was pasta, lemon, bread, orange, and cake. So another definition, we say an item set is a set of items, an item set X is a set of items, a subset of I. So for example, for example, uh, pasta and lemon is an item set that has a size of two, we say, because it has two items. Okay, so here I have some other example. You can see some item set of size one, means they have one item, like pasta, lemon, bread, orange, and cake. Some item set of size two, like pasta, lemon, pasta, bread, pasta, orange, pasta, cake, and so on. So, for the ECLAT algorithm, we will suppose that we have a total order over the items. Total order means we have some item like pasta, lemon, bread, orange, and cake. And we suppose there is some order between them. Like pasta is before lemon, lemon before bread, bread before orange, orange before cake. So, we can choose any order actually, okay? But for the ECLAT algorithm, we need to define an order between the item. It can be anything. It could be the alphabetical order and so on, okay? But just for the purpose of the algorithm processing, we want to have some order between the items. So here, in my example, I will choose this order, pasta before lemon, before bread, before orange, and before cake. So this will be a kind of processing order, an order to process the item, to find the item set. And we need this order, especially to avoid looking at the same item set twice, okay? So to avoid looking at the same combination many times, we use some order between the items when we search for the frequent item set. You will see later more details. So for the database I show you before about shopping, this is the search uh, space. That means all the possibilities, the item sets we could uh, find. So in this picture, this is a Haas uh, diagram, this kind of picture, okay. L means lemon, P for pasta, B for bread, O for orange, and C for cake. So at the top, I have the empty set, means I buy nothing. Then we have lemon, pasta, bread, orange, and cake. Then we have the sets of two items, like lemon pasta, lemon bread, lemon orange, and so on. Then we have three items, four items, and then the set of all items, means we buy everything. So this search space is all the combinations we can make with the items in our store, for example, okay? And here in yellow, I have highlighted the frequent item set, if we set the minimum support to two, okay. So these are the item sets that could be frequent, for example, okay. So this is one way to look at the search space. There is also another way to look at the search space that is equivalent, okay. It's just another way to think about this. So this representation, we call this a set enumeration tree. So again, the idea is similar. At the top of the tree, we have the empty set. Then we have the single item like lemon, pasta, bread, orange, and cake. For lemon, under lemon, we have all the, the item set that start with lemon, like lemon pasta, lemon bread, lemon orange, lemon cake. Under lemon pasta, we have all the item set that start with L and P, like lemon pasta bread, lemon pasta orange, lemon pasta cake. 
Under lemon pasta bread, we have all the items set that start with lemon pasta bread, and so on. Okay. So here, as you can notice, we use the order on the items I show you before. Okay. We said lemon is before pasta, before uh, bread, and so on. Orange and cake. So using this order, we can look at the search space like a tree, like this. And this is what ECLAT, the algorithm, will use to try to find the frequent item set. You will see after. Okay, so before I explain more about the algorithm, I need to introduce some more definitions. Another important definition is the concept of equivalence class. If we have two item set X and Y that have a size K, we say that X and Y will be in the same equivalence class if the K minus one first item of X and Y are the same according to the total order, the order on the items that we have. So what does it mean? Okay, let me show you this with an example. Here I have three item sets, pasta, lemon, bread, pasta, lemon, orange, pasta, lemon, cake. We say all of them are in the same equivalence class. Why? Because the two first items are the same. All items are the same except the last one. Okay, this is the definition. So an equivalence class is all the item sets where all the items are the same except the last one, like here. Let me show you this in the picture I have shown to you before. So this is one equivalence class, pasta, lemon, bread, orange, and cake. All these item sets have only one item, but all these item sets are the same except the last one, okay, except the last item. So actually, they will be in the same equivalence class. This is a special case. Let's look at another example. This is also one equivalence class because all these item set are the same except the last item. They all start with P, but we have PL, PB, PO, and PC. Another equivalence class is this. LB, LO, LC, all the same except the last item. Another equivalence class and another one here. Here we have some more equivalence class. Again, this is an equivalence class because all these item sets start with PL and the last item is different and so on. So we have more equivalence class like this and so on. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. Now you know what is an item set, an equivalence class, and you know we have a total order. So now we are ready to look at the ECLAT algorithm to understand how it works. So I will show you with an example, then I will talk about more details. The first step of the ECLAT algorithm is to read the database to create a vertical representation of the database. So here we have again the database we saw before and we want to read this database to create a vertical database. What is a vertical database? Let me show you. So it is what a table as you see at the bottom. So in the original database, each record, each line is a transaction. In a vertical database, it is like if we rot rotate the database. So each line, instead of a transaction, each line is an item. So here we have pasta appear in transaction one, two, three, four. Okay. Lemon appear in transaction one, two, and four. You can check is correct. Bread appear in transaction one and so on. So these two table give the same information. The only difference in the top table, each line is a transaction. In the bottom table, each line is an item. It is like if you turn the database. So in the ECLAT algorithm, 
we need to use a vertical database. So we need to read the database to create the table like this. Okay. So each line of this kind of database, we call this a TID list, means a list of transaction ID. So transaction ID is like T1, T2, T3, and T4. Okay. This is the transaction ID list of pasta and so on. Okay, so the second step, after you build something like that, this will give you the first equivalence class. The first equivalence class is all the item sets that have one item, like pasta, lemon, bread, orange, and cake. So now what Eclat will do is the following. It will first eliminate the infrequent items. So bread appear only in one transaction. But in our example, the minimum support is set to two. So this is infrequent bread. So we can eliminate bread right away. So the other item sets are frequent item set pasta appear in four transaction it has a support of four lemon appear in three transaction orange in three transaction and cake in two so eclat will output the frequent item set with one item pasta lemon orange and cake next then using this equivalence class that we had before we will try to generate some equivalence class that have a size k plus 1. Okay, here that means 2. We add size 1. Here we we'll have item set of size 2. So to do this, Eclat will follow the order on the items. We'll combine pasta with lemon. Okay, pasta with orange, pasta with cake. So this is an equivalence class everything that starts with pasta and has the size of 2. Okay. So how to find the numbers here, the transactions? It is easy. We do the intersection. So pasta appear in T1, T2, T3, and T4. Lemon in T1, 2, and 4. So what is the same here? It is T1, T2, and T4. So pasta lemon appear in T1, T2, and T4. Okay. Pasta orange. What is the same? Pasta and orange. So we have T1, T3, and T4. So pasta orange would be T1, T3, and T4. So this is the first equivalence class. Everything starts with pasta. Now from this... We can also build another equivalence class. Everything start with lemon, okay? But following the order between the items. So lemon with orange, lemon with cake, okay? But we don't have lemon with pasta because we did already here, okay? So here we need to follow the order. Lemon with orange, lemon with cake. What is after according to the other? So we build the equivalence class like this. And also, we can make another equivalence class, all the item sets of size 2 that start with orange. So we have orange with cake. And that's all, okay? We don't do orange lemon, orange pasta, because they are in the other equivalence class. We need to follow the other. And lastly, we cannot make anything that starts with cake because there's nothing after according to the other. So now we have some new equivalence class for the two items. Then Eclat eliminate the infrequent item set. So here there's nothing to eliminate. All the item sets here appear in at least two transactions. So all of them appear at least twice. They are frequent. So Eclat will output all of them. After that, Eclat will do some recursion. It will try to process 
each of these equivalence class one by one. So first, let's take this one, okay, here. So a class recursively process each of those equivalence class, the first one here. So what a class will do, it will try from these two items to make three items. So from this equivalence class, we can do pasta lemon with pasta orange. It will make pasta lemon orange. Or pasta lemon with pasta cake. It will make pasta lemon and cake. And again, we can calculate here the uh, transactions for, for these automatically. We don't need to look at the database. So this is the first equivalence class. And also we can combine pasta orange with pasta cake to make another equivalence class. So here, equivalence class, everything starts with pasta lemon. Here, everything starts with pasta orange. There is only one item set. So from here, what we can do? We can eliminate the infrequent item sets. So here, for example, pasta lemon cake appear in only one transaction. It is infrequent because we want everything appear at least twice. And the two other item sets are frequent. So a class will output them. Then after this, a class will repeat this process over and over again. It will try to build more equivalence class and so on until it finds all the frequent item sets. So the final result will be like this, okay. So we find uh, all these frequent item sets and here I have indicated the support of these item sets also. So in terms of performance, if we want to compare with some other algorithms like a priori, ECLAT in this example has explored only 14 item sets, but a priori will have explored 18 in this case, okay. So this is due to the use of the equivalence class and also because of the total order between the items. I will explain to you more about this after. So how is the performance of ECLAT? ECLAT actually is a good algorithm because it only needs to scan the database a single time to create the vertical database. After that, it will just combine these uh, transaction ID list, okay, to make the new equivalence class, but it don't need to look at the database, the original database again. Then the most costly operation will be to do the intersection of these ID lists. In the worst case, these lists are very, very long. If you have some item that appear in all the transaction then the list of transactions might be very, very long. So there are several optimizations we can use to make a CLAT faster. The first optimization is about the total order. I told you before, we need a total order in a CLAT. So which total order we can choose to have the best performance? Let me explain this to you. So, which one we should choose? Should we choose the alphabetical order or just any order? Does it make a difference? So actually, there is some better order. We, it, we should not choose any order. We should choose uh, the best one usually is the order of increasing support. Means we will order the items from the less frequent one to the most frequent one, okay. So let me show you this with a picture. So on this picture, we see again the search space of item set. Bef to explain more about the order, let's look again at this picture. In this picture, we can see on the left, I have put a, a line around all the item sets that start with P, okay, like PL, PB, PO, PBO, and so on. After that, 
I have put uh, a line around all item set that start with L and with B and with O and with C. So here um, in this slide, what we can observe that is interesting is that the subtree here with P, everything starts with P, is bigger than the subtree for L or the subtree for B here or the subtree for O or C. So actually, under each item here, the trees containing the different item sets are not the same size. So because of this, the order that we choose to process the item set will be very important. Let me show you on the next slide. Here I show you the order that I used in the previous example. So using this order, Pasta is on the left. Then we have L, B, O, and C. And with the red rectangles here, I show the item sets that Eklat has visited in, in our example before. Totally, 14 item sets have been explored. Now, what happens if we change the order? Okay, before we use that order here, now we will change to the order of increasing support. So from the less frequent item to the most frequent. Less frequent item is the least frequent item is bread. It appears only in one transaction. And the most frequent is pasta with a support of four. So here we use a different order. And what we can see using Eclat, if we use Eclat, we will visit only 13 item set instead of 14 to find the same result. So why is it like this? It is because when we change the order, B is the first according to the order, bread, okay? But bread is infrequent. So we don't need to look at all the subtree of B we can save a lot, a lot of time. But before, if I go back to the previous slide, B was here, okay, according to the previous order. If we eliminate B here, we only eliminate a few item sets. But let me go back again. If we change the order, bread is the first, then we can eliminate a lot, a lot of item sets. So this illustration is to convince you that choosing the order is very important in Eclat. We use the order of the starting from the least frequent item to the most frequent item. This in practice usually is the best order. So the difference here is very small, 13 items set instead of 14. But if you use the large database, with more items also, it will make a big difference, much bigger difference than this. It could be many times faster. So that was about this optimization. Another optimization that we can do is the following. Okay, in Eclat, what is the most costly operation? One of the most important or costly operation is the intersection. Intersection means you have two lists of transaction IDs and you want to do the intersection to find uh, what is common between two item sets. Okay, So one optimization is to use the bit vectors to represent the list of transactions and then we can use the N operation to make the intersection really fast. So let me give you more details with some example to show how it works. So here I have the same example database on top. And at the bottom, I have the vertical database. But here it is different. The difference is that here I use the bit vectors. Okay, let me show you. So here for pasta, instead of having the list like T1, T2, T3, T4, I have four bits, one, 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 one. The first one means pasta appear in T1. 
The second one, pasta a pain T2. Pasta a pain T3 and T4, like this. Now let's take another line. Lemon is 1101. It means lemon appear in T1, T2, does not appear in T3 because there's a zero, and appear in T4. So for each item, instead of having the list of transactions, we have a, a, a bit vector, a list of bits that tell these items appear in which transaction. And what is good about this, it will save a lot of space uh, most of the time, okay? Maybe not in all the cases. So for example, pasta appear in four transactions. It will take only four bits instead of, uh, let's say, storing the number for each transaction okay only four bits but of course if we have very big database it will, could take a lot of bits too so it depends okay so now let me show you how we can use these uh, bit vectors okay so let's say i have the again the same table here the vertical database I want to calculate the support of pasta with lemon. So normally what I will do is find the transaction for pasta, the transaction for lemon, and do the intersection. So if I add the list of transactions like T1, T2, T3, I will have to compare each transaction to find what is the intersection. It will be costly, okay. But here, if I, uh, I use the bit vectors instead, I can do the logical N. It is an operation on your CPU to directly calculate the intersection. So 1, 1, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 0, 1. The logical N will give me 1, 1, 0, 1. It means the transactions that contain pasta lemon. And since there are three bits set to 1, it means it has a support of three. So this optimization can be very useful, especially uh, if you have the long list of transactions contain a lot, a lot of ones, then this could save some memory and also it could be faster to do the intersection. But if you have a sparse database, a database where the items appear in only a few transactions, so most of the bits are zero and only a few are set to one. Maybe this optimization is not so good. So it depends, okay, on your data. So that was the second optimization. Another optimization is to save the memory, okay, optimization three. So let's say I have an equivalence class like this, items A, B, C, D, A, B, C, E. A, B, C, F, A, B, C, G, A, B, C, H. So I could store these item set in memory like A, B, C, D, four characters, A, B, C, E, and so on. But this will take a lot of space because actually all these item sets have the same prefix A, B, C. They all start with A, B, C. So to save the memory, I could say the prefix of this class is ABC, and then I have ABC with E, with F, with G, with H. So here, the amount of memory is much less than on top, okay? So this is another optimization uh, you can use if you do the programming for Eclat. So here, lastly, I want to give you the code of the, the pseudocode of the Eclat algorithm. So how does it work briefly? First, we need to convert the database into some equivalence class, okay? So at the beginning, I did not show here, we read the database, the algorithm read the database, and we'll create the equivalence class containing all the single item, one equivalence class with all single items. Then we call Eclat with this equivalence class C that contains the single item. 
and for each item set in C, so for each item at the beginning, we take the first item x, then we create a variable t to store all the item set that start with x and that have one more item. Then we look all the other item set in that class, the same class as x, and we try to combine with x to make a larger item set we call r. We calculate the transaction list of R by doing the intersection of the transaction of X and Y. So it could be using the bit vector or not. And then this will give us the support. So if X and Y is frequent, then we output R. It is a frequent item set. And we add to the equivalence class of all the item set that start with X. Now, when we finish the loop for x, we will call eclat to recursively explore uh, other classes, make new classes starting from the item sets that start with x. And then after we finish with x, we do the next item and so on. Okay. So this is just the pseudocode in case you want to see uh, the, the code, more details, more formal about the ECLAT algorithm. So in conclusion today, I have presented the ECLAT algorithm and some optimization. Uh, ECLAT is an important algorithm in pattern mining. It has inspired a lot of other algorithms we can also improve ECLAT, add some constraint, or to use ECLAT for the data with the utility, the weights, or many other variations of this problem. So ECLAT actually is like a basic algorithm that you can modify to do many, many other things. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, so thank you for watching this video.